Alyssa, why did you want, why do you want this ban on the Adler 7 shot dropped? Well, because it's not part of the National Firearms Agreement. We have, uh, we have uh, shotguns all treated as Category A. We have uh, 10 round magazine limits for rifles and pistols. There's no particular reason to treat a seven round um, shotgun as any different from a rifle or a pistol in terms of magazine capacity. And sporting shooters, and there's 800,000 of us in the country, we're sick to death of this incremental encroachment on what we're allowed to use. It's as if we're just, we're treated as criminals in waiting and they've just got to gradually take our, uh, our sporting tools away from us, like our, if they were golf clubs or tennis rackets or something, take them away from us little bit by little bit. If it's, uh, if it's lever action shotguns today, it'll be something else tomorrow and, and uh, uh, another thing uh, next week. It's, it's just got to stop. But you're seeing people say, well, look, if you bring this, this uh, gun, it um, seems to fire off fairly fast, but although, as we saw, not faster over a number of rounds than a uh, standard double barrel. Um, is there a risk to Australians? You know, can you see some madmen going around bang, 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 bang? Oh, you, you know, you can never rule uh, some madman getting hold of a gun and, uh, and that kind of gun or any other kind of gun. But think about this. A First World War... Lee Enfield 303 carries a 10 round magazine. So they, they go back to before the First World War. This is the rifle that was carried by our servicemen in Gallipoli and then in, uh, in France. Um, that can fire 10 rounds of, of uh, a 303 projectile. Uh, well, easily it's lethal at 500 metres, 10 rounds, and they can fire quite quickly a bolt action. That's been legal, that's category B. That's been legal for forever in Australia. Here we've got a shotgun that can only fire seven rounds. It's not lethal beyond about 100 metres, and they're treating it as if some, it's some you know, demonic new technology, and it's only lever action. I mean, lever action has been around for 150 years. It, it's absurd that it should be treated any differently. Now, look, to be honest, I'm struggling to see why this gun is so much different from the ones already out there. So, but that's one issue. The other issue is why trade your support like this, saying drop the ban on guns and I'll support your building and construction commission over here, totally unrelated. Yeah, well, it, you know, it's, it's a bit of a coincidence that it came up, that they came up at the same time. In August, when I, I was told that the deal that I'd made with uh, uh, Keenan and Dutton in relation to the, uh, uh, the import ban was going to be reversed. So in other words, I, I was dudded on that deal. So they got what they wanted, my vote. I didn't get what I wanted, which was uh, the, the import ban being lifted. Um, I went to the government, the various ministers, including the Prime Minister, and said, we have a problem. I'm, I'm one grumpy crossbench senator. You don't need me to be grumpy, you know, you need to do something about this. It's been there for two months. Now it gets to the crunchy stage of the ABCC and they're seeking my vote and all of a sudden they're saying, OK, what do we have to do to get your vote? And I'm saying, well, first of all, there's this unresolved issue of uh, dudding me on this deal that I had on the import ban. And then there are various other things that I've been talking to the government about that I'm not talking about. But, it, it, I mean, if there'd been another bill that they were seeking my support on, not the ABCC, and I was 50-50 either way on that bill, and so it depends on what it was, uh, the same issue would have arisen. Well, did Malcolm Turnbull give you reason to believe that the deal was uh, possible? Um, well, I haven't really been negotiating with Malcolm uh, around the ABCC. Uh, I, I, I spoke to him briefly today. But uh, uh, I haven't really been liaising with him at all on this. I went to see him, as I said... Uh, you said you had a meeting? Yeah, at the end mm -hmm. of August, when, uh, as soon as uh, Parliament resumed, I, I sought a meeting with him and explained to him I was an unhappy, unhappy camper. Um, so he's been aware of it, but all the discussions about the ABCC have been with uh, the Minister or various other um, Senate leaders. And um, so he, he, is, he, he hasn't really been indirectly involved. And those other ministers, did they give you reason to believe you could make a deal? 
Yes. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the situation is that nobody can quite understand, as far as I can tell, uh, why uh, Justice Minister Michael Keenan is so obsessed about uh, a shotgun which is really no different, as you pointed out, from those that are already available. What's the difference between seven shots and five shots? Why is ten shots in a rifle and ten shots in a pistol OK, but seven shots in a shotgun is not OK? What's the logic of that? No one knows, you know, what's the reasoning behind it. I don't think there is any reasoning. I think uh, uh, Keenan is, has got an obsession about this and uh, sure. he, he's pushing this all by himself. I, I think we got that. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sympathetic there. It's just the, the, the principle here. Which of the ministers suggested to you that they were open to a deal, uh, the guns versus uh, your vote, in exchange for your vote? Well, well um, I don't think they suggested it to me. I think I suggested it to them that there was this unresolved issue. we have been sitting there for two months. Yeah, but which one, said, which one said, OK, David, I think we can do this? Well, none of them have said that. They've all talked in terms of, well, what, what might be possible. I have presented them with options in terms of, you know, what, what might uh, be uh, acceptable to me and to sporting shooters. Um, we've talked around um, various ways to deal with this, but there was never any uh, definite deal, but there was a definitely an intention on the part of, say, Michaelia Cash, for example, to come to a happy landing where she could get my vote. And... Uh, uh, that's now less likely as a result of the Prime Minister's announcement today that the ban on, on uh, imports is permanent. Now, is, that, is it permanent? So, can I explore permanent? that, David? Well, mm. I, it seems to me it's permanent unless the states reclassify the gun. I think that's probably as best as I can interpret well, what he said today. Given that it's not yeah. then changing the law in accordance with you, what you believe was an agreement and in, uh, in accordance with what you're demanding in exchange for your vote, does that mean you will not vote for now the Australian Building and Construction Commission? Um, we haven't got to that point. I'm, uh, I've always been a bit uh, ambivalent about the ABCC. I acknowledge that what it's intended to do is to clean up thuggish behaviour in the building industry and uh, I don't deny the, the need for something to be done in that. Uh, but uh, it also has some very illiberal aspects to it. Reverse onus of proof, reversal of the onus of proof, and removal of the right to silence being top of the list. Um, those are, you know, serious encroachments on traditional rights and freedoms, and I have always been uncomfortable about it. I've never been black and white on this ABCC. I voted for it uh, at the second reading uh, on the two t times that has come up in the Senate. But I was always a bit uncertain mm. about whether I'd vote for it at the third reading. I've always been 50-50. Now, if it's a, if it's a lowering All of right. taxes, well, let me go a for another of spending, one. a balancing... Mm. I know you're hot on that and free speech too. But, David, let me go to the mm. earlier one then. Last August, uh, there were emails showing the government sending you uh, um, an agreement of confirming a deal. Ministers Dutton and Keenan, uh, it said, had agreed that the government would insert a sunset clause of 12 months into those recently passed laws to ban the importing of lever-action shotguns with a magazine of more than five rounds, which is this one. And in return, they said, you would vote against the Labor amendments to the Migration Amendment Bill, which, in fact, you then did. But here's the point, David, and here's what I really don't like about this horse trading. You actually said at the time, much like with the uh, ABCC now, you were actually broadly in agreement with those Labor amendments, which were about adding protections to customs, collecting biometric data from children and, and the disabled. So why did you vote against them? Just because of this other thing? I mean, it seems to me you're passing or blocking bills against your judgment simply to get a vote on the guns. Well, no. I mean, there's, there's some legislation where I'm strongly opposed. Uh, there's some where I'm strongly in support. Um, and there's some where I really don't care. I could go either way. Um, I'll give you an example. No, but I just gave example. you an example of one that you said you were broadly yeah. in. You were broadly in support, yet you voted against on this promise of well, uh, guns. You know, the, the Labor amendments were pretty trivial. 
Um, the government was all animated about them, but I wasn't. Uh, they were introducing, um, you know, a, sort of a belt and braces approach, if you like, to to uh, children and their biometric data. There already were substantial safeguards in the legislation. I had discussed it with the government. Um, and uh, so I thought, OK, well, you know, I, un I am some sympathy for Labor's position, but it's not a black and white issue. I was, I was happy to go either way on it. Um, I'll give you an exa another example. But don't you see the issue here how... that we get a bit worried about uh, how this horse trading works, that shoddy legislation, bad legislation gets blocked simply because people voting for it are on a promise to get their own uh, hobby horse up. Well, welcome to politics, Andrew. Welcome to politics. Um, I got yeah. a, a, a producti Productivity Commission inquiry into our immigration policy, which is a very good policy, and I'll defend it uh, very, very strongly, uh, as a result of Scott Morrison and I doing a deal on TPVs. I, th I thought the government's immigration policy was, uh, was all uh, around the wrong way. Um, putting, uh, reintroducing TPVs I didn't regard as a particularly uh, major event and uh, so uh, Scott Morrison was doing horse trading with me and all the other crossbenchers when he was immigration minister. One of the deals I got was an increase in refugees and uh, the refugee intake and a productivity commission inquiry into our uh, immigration policy. That has uh, I think done very positive things for a more constructive debate about immigration in this country and uh, I think that's a positive outcome. David Lanehelm, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure.